So now in this video I have a simple demonstration circuit of a virtual ground rail splitter. So we actually split the voltage at the output of the op amp in relationship to the supply voltage. It's uh, halfway between the positive and negative rail. So right now we have the jumper to the positive rail. The red LED is lit up. We have the situation that you see on the schematic that I drew right there. Now if I put the jumper to the negative supply right there, now you can see the blue LED lights up. So we have the output is a higher voltage than the rail voltage right now, the one that I'm connected to. This is the other rail uh, voltage, the output is a lower voltage right there. So we're actually changing the direction that current is flowing in this circuit. So I'll uh, kind of zoom in and um, you can see we got 10 volts at the supply right there, about 12 milliamps of current for the red LED and about eight for the blue LED. Blue LED drops a little bit more voltage. They both have the same current setting resistor and uh, so since uh, the blue LED is gonna drop about a volt more, it's gonna have less current flowing through it. But there you can see, what we have is at the output, uh, you know, a fixed voltage. It's wired as a voltage follower right there two equal value resistors. I'm using two 10K resistors. It doesn't matter um, their exact values. Since they're equal, we'll have half of the supply voltage right there. So of course, really low value resistors. Extra current's gonna pass through wasted current for no good reason. You can use relatively high value resistors right here. And uh, in any case, that's going to the non-inverting input. When you have the output and the inverting input tied together, and this is a, a non-connected point. Those are two separate uh, wires. All these other spots are connected. So I know a lot of people don't like uh, the system there, but I wasn't gonna draw dots everywhere. So I'm using the system where if the lines are touching straight like that, they are connected. If there's a little jump, it's not connected, it's jumping over. So in any case, we have the negative feedback, direct negative feedback right there. When you have the output connected to the inverting input, the op amp does whatever it can to make that voltage exactly the same as the non-inverting input. And uh, the output will go up if the non-inverting input voltage is higher than the inverting, and it will go down if the uh, non-inverting input uh, voltage is lower than the inverting voltage right there. But um, when those voltages line up, the output locks in place right there. And so the way to do that is to give the exact same voltage. Hopefully that makes sense. So in any case, out of this 10 volts, in relationship to zero volts, ground right there, it says negative five because this is in relationship to the output. Um, so the uh, zero volts, ground right there, this is five volts higher, and then 10 volts higher over there, 10 volts higher than ground. So five volts higher than ground, 10 volts higher than ground, five volts higher than our virtual ground right now. So we're calling this ground zero volts there. That's what these two numbers are for. So this is five volts higher than five volts right there. So we got a positive five volts. I can zoom in uh, right there. And the red LED lights up because of the direction that I placed it right there. It's forward bias. And uh, it's going, um, you know, to ground basically, but this is setting five volts. It's making sure there's a five volt uh, difference. Now we have the negative side there. So you can see negative five volts. That's because out of this 10 volts, that's where five volts is. And uh, so it's five volts higher than what we got over there, which makes down here five volts less, negative five volts right there in relationship to our new ground right there, zero volts. That's what's important to remember. So out of the 10 volts, the more positive side, five volts is there, the more negative side volts is over there. Hopefully that makes sense. It's really, um, you know, that simple. So as I said before, we're alternating the direction that the current goes through the load. So from the positive supply, this is ultimately, you know, headed to ground, although it's maintaining a five volt uh, difference. But this is five volts higher. So there is a difference of five volts going through the red LED. And then uh, when it comes to this direction right there, so we saw current going that way when you think of positive and negative. Now, when we move the jumper over there, this is five volts higher than that zero volts there. So that's negative 
5 volts less than 0 volts up there. Current, this is the higher voltage now. Current flows through that uh, LED, the blue one, because of the direction I wired it. And it heads to ground down there. And here we'll zoom in and take a closer look. That's as close as I can get or else my camera uh, really hates it. So, in any case, red LED is lit up while well, we got the jumper of the power supply. Now, we could just have, you know, parallel red and blue LEDs where the blue LED doesn't light up because uh, it has a higher forward voltage. I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. Um, but here you can see we go to the negative supply and I didn't know, no, uh, nothing's going to happen while I'm floating because uh, these two LEDs just are connected in one direction uh, to the circuit. So there's no reason for one or the other to light up until I make a connection to the supply voltage. So there we go, uh, blue LED lights up. Now, what I was saying before, if they're just parallel, the blue and the red LED, and the red LED lights up, it's just because the blue LED has a higher forward voltage. It needs more voltage to conduct, and right now, the uh, LED is a little bit like a Zener uh, diode. So it's forward bias, but um, it's conducting at a certain voltage, which is lower than what the blue one needs to conduct. And um, it's keeping the voltage too low for the blue one to conduct until you remove it. And then it's not part of the circuit anymore. Blue LED can light up. So in any case, just thought I would uh, show that and uh, make sure I put the uh, blue LED in the right way. Line lead the anode, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to go to uh, the output. Yeah, okay, there we go. It would have lit up if I did something wrong. So, in any case, uh, we'll zoom back. Jumper is to the positive supply right now. Uh, important to uh, know. We got the multimeter. So, this uh, meter, I don't have to move the red probe for anything other than high current right there. Just set it to V. And uh, measuring voltage is really safe. Um, so, I'm not going to talk about that uh, anymore. So, I showed the power supply. We had 10 volts with the power supply at the rail. We lose a little bit due to resistance in the wires and stuff, especially as current is flowing. Um, but in any case, there you can see, that's our uh, supply voltage. The jumper is to the positive supply right there. So ground is gonna be the output right here. And uh, since the jumper is to the positive supply, I could either go to the resistor, but push it on the resistor uh, will give me less accurate readings than pushing this jumper. Um, I could also use my uh, alligator clips with the pins at the end. But in case, there you can see, we got plus five volts in relationship to the output. Now it doesn't matter if I, you know, measure the load or not. The output voltage doesn't change. So I'm gonna go to the negative supply and we'll see in relationship to the output now, the negative supply is uh, negative, 4.98 volts. If I move the jumper over here, you know, the blue LED lights up. This is connected to the uh, negative supply. So instead of that jumper, I can just go up to the alligator clip. Should be able to see it. You know, that's a negative supply there. It's the same connection as down there. Um, just a different spot, but it's all one node. It's basically a almost zero ohm resistance connection. Uh, touching one spot is basically the same as touching another. Maybe I can plug into that. No, I can't plug into the board. This is a little, okay, if I push, I can, right there. So, in any case, wherever it's negative, I can connect it. But you saw that negative voltage there. Um, it doesn't matter that current's flowing through the LEDs or not. I eliminated the current altogether. We come to the output. Negative supply is negative 5 volts. Positive supply is positive 5 volts. It locked that voltage in place because of the two equal uh, 10 ohm resistors setting 5 volts at the non-inverting input. The output does whatever it can do to maintain that. Um, this particular op amp can't handle a lot of current so if you try doing something that needs a fair amount of current it will throw that voltage off it'll fail it'll get closer to the positive supply or the negative supply whichever direction the load is headed to if you try to ask for more current than what the op amp can do it should not damage the op amp though they uh, are made to uh, limit the amount of current that they output to a safe amount um, usually, so unless something's wrong with them or something. Um, but in case, there we go. There's a schematic pin layout right there. Always remember, in this particular case, I have the plus below the minus, but uh, sometimes when uh, me and other people, a lot of other people draw schematics, they put the plus above the minus, even though on this particular component, at least all the ones I think I have, uh, plus is uh, below the minus on there. So. Whichever one's higher or lower here, 
does not necessarily mean it's the same as which one is higher or lower on the component. I always check for the pin layout. Be aware of that. And here is a case where, uh, you know, we got uh, ground, but I made a virtual ground output right there. So a lot of data sheets that you see, um, maybe for like this circuit, but uh, there's a lot of power supplies that give you a positive voltage, a ground somewhere in the middle, and then a negative voltage. You put the most negative voltage to the uh, ground pin in that case, uh, you know, V minus instead of V plus. There's also VEE and uh, this could be VCC and so on. Um, but in any case, that's uh, why I don't just have ground and VCC or V plus. Um, you see like both of those. But a lot of times you just see ground for the negative supply pin. But uh, like op amps are used in a lot of dual supplies where there's a positive voltage and a negative voltage in relationship to ground. This is a virtual ground. I made the ground in this particular case. Um, the power supply makes a ground if you have a dual power supply, an actual dual power supply. This is a way that you can make a dual supply out of a single supply right there. And I don't use this symbol a lot. A lot of uh, um, schematics, I usually got like a battery symbol or something. Now I just kind of do plus minus, um, depending on the setup I have. But sometimes you see like a, a bubble with the voltage in there, plus on top, minus on the bottom. That just means a voltage source right there. Something that provides a certain amount of voltage. You'll see that on schematics from time to time. So very important to, uh, to know that. It uh, seems obvious now, you know, that uh, that's kind of instinct for me now to uh, see that. But if you're used to seeing si different symbols for a voltage source, uh, that might be confusing. So in any case, uh, yeah, let's end this zooming back. Why not? So went on much longer than I uh, thought, but hopefully you found it interesting. And also, I use the 220 ohm resistor. It's a 10 volt circuit. But again, when it comes to the LEDs, they're only going to have 5 volts across them right there. I would not use a 220 ohm resistor if uh, you're not experienced with picking a resistor to protect the LEDs. I would not use a 220 ohm resistor to protect an LED from 10 volts. I would use uh, at least 470, maybe even a little bit higher um, at uh, 10 volts. But we split that voltage in half. We set a halfway point on one side of the LEDs or the other, depending on which one you're looking at. So there's only a 5 volt difference, either more positive or negative across the LEDs. 220 ohm will work all right. And the blue one will be bright enough with a 1000 ohm uh, resistor, but the LED would be, you know, somewhat dim. So instead, we're going to get about four times the current with the 220 ohm resistor. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.